these are my mistakes. I take ownership of them. I don't think I um, um, deliberately set out to uh, use the system or abuse the system. She has been one of those in the middle of the storm for months. Senator Pamela Wallen and the expenses scandal that's rocked Parliament Hill. She's paid back almost $40,000 for expense claims deemed improper. And there are more payments to come. But the investigation into her claims and those of three of her Senate colleagues continues. Through it all, Wallen has remained silent until tonight. The former journalist and diplomat sat down for an interview this afternoon. So why are you doing this? You've been, you know, very quiet through this process and you made a point of saying you didn't want to talk till it was all over. It's not over. It isn't over and that's exactly the problem. Uh, we were first told that this, we'd have the results in January and then February and then April and, you know, now maybe the middle of the summer and nobody more than uh, me is hoping that's the case. Uh, but I think it's getting very, um, difficult for people, it's difficult for me, uh, and I'd like to at least express uh, some of my feelings about this. Um, I'm very sorry, obviously, that I've caused all of this grief for my family and my friends and for my fellow par parliamentarians, and, and I think taxpayers have a right to know. So I want to say some things about this, but, you know, I just I just am waiting for this process to come to a final conclusion, and I hope we get that before uh, before September. So when you say you're sorry, you're sorry for the grief you caused yeah. others, um, but are you sorry for any actions, or is there something you did that's caused the grief? Here's the thing. Uh, when I decided uh, to um, turn my attention to public service. I was in journalism for many years, as you well know, and the public does too. And the Prime Minister then asked me to go to New York after 9-11. Prime Minister Harper then asked me to go to Afghanistan, and then in turn to come into the Senate. And I really thought that is something I could usefully contribute to and try and make a difference. It means you're busy. So I do everything whole hog. I kind of throw myself into it. And what I didn't do was mind the shop properly, right? There's a lot of paperwork, particularly in government, every time you move, every time you go anywhere, uh, sort of more paperwork than is humanly possible to uh, keep on top of. So I made mistakes. So, but it was you personally who made mistakes? Well, I'm I mean, responsible. do you blame your staff? Or no, do you I sign the documents. So I take responsibility. I take full responsibility for this. I should have gone over it with a fine tooth comb as anybody should and to make sure, but I just didn't. What are we talking about in terms of the problem? Was the problem, you know, travel expenses? Was it flights? Was it uh, you were uh, charging the Senate for things that the party should have been charged no, for? No, it I mean, didn't have anything to do with the party. The, the problems that we discovered, and long before there was any audit, my office got on this. I've got a staff of two and me, and we spent every night, and we are still there, uh, going through, you know, I want to get, I want to have every fact in my hand when, uh, when we do this. So we started to see problems where things that should have been charged to a third party weren't. It was just kind of going through the Senate system as it always had for many years. But was it travel? Is yeah, it, all, it was is travel. Is it all about travel? It's all about travel. I have the, I've never, you know, I don't submit uh, entertainment claims. I half the time don't even put in my per diems. You know, that I'm not concerned about that. But So we're talking flight costs? Flight costs. Flight costs. So the money is not in my pocket. The money is in the pocket of the airlines, <laughs> or and it's, but it's mostly who came, whose pocket it came out of to yeah, pay to pay the right. airlines. And it should have made. What about residency? Is there anything at issue financially on residency? No, we have gone through this. The Senate has signed off on it. Uh, even the Prime Minister sort of said, you know, you meet the requirements. It's a very simple test. You know, do you? own four thousand dollars worth of property in the province that you represent you declare uh, your primary residence in the province you represent it's it's a pretty straightforward thing let's get back to the issue that you say is the sole issue that's right. at hand yeah w which is flight expenses travel right. expenses um, we're not talking about you know a, 
a $25 cab ticket here. We're no. talking about, we're talking about uh, at least $40,000 you, you, you've paid back. Yeah, 38, but yes. <laughs> 38 and, and change, and there may, yeah. there may be more. There may be more, I don't know. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. And that it's, slipped through the system somehow? Well, that's part of the issue. I mean, you have a, you have a fail-safe in there, which supposedly is the Senate finance uh, system that's supposed to check that. Uh, you know, I didn't have travel claims rejected. Uh, but there were mistakes. Some of, the, uh, some of the concern and some of the things that I've paid back at this point also, for me, are a pretty fundamental issue and, I, and, and it hasn't been resolved yet. But this whole question of going to Saskatchewan directly. They have two categories of travel, regular and other. Your regular travel is when you go home. But they want you to get on a plane and go directly there. That isn't how I operate. Um, if I have a day, like a Friday, where I can go to Halifax or Edmonton or Toronto and do a speech or do an event, I will do that on the way home. I am still going home. That doesn't count as travel to my home. It counts as other. So the numbers in this category are large. They're large for people who say, why isn't she going to Saskatchewan? Well, I was. I was there 168 days last year. So I got there somehow. I just did it sometimes not directly. There are no direct flights out of Ottawa. Anybody who tries to fly to Saskatchewan or leave Saskatchewan knows how difficult it is. Was there that imbalance in the other senators from Saskatchewan's um, No, not that charges? I'm aware of. But I mean, they were more in the direct to home flights as opposed to the other flights. Yeah, I, you know, I do a lot of public speaking. I do a lot of other events. And are those for the Senate or are those for the party? No, for the Senate. I did very um, little direct party work. I mean, obviously in Saskatchewan, I went and, um, and campaigned for some of my colleagues. Obviously, I would do that. Uh, but there weren't, uh, you know, there weren't charges associated with that because I'm actually at home. The flights that were deemed inappropriate, mm -hmm. not only by the Senate, but eventually by you, well, were, were these like personal? By, by me, because <laughs> yeah. I'm the one that, that went, uh, you know, and looked at this. Uh, they're business but that, that related. Was after the issue was raised, right? right? Right. I went back and looked at it, and the, the ones that were uh, that uh, you know that were the responsibility they should have been paid by a third party those are the ones I just took on right away those uh, those repayments I made instantly because third it was clear party they were mistakes you were at a speech or no more like a board or a you know some other event where it was just a mistake I mean it was just literally you know a, a not a good one, but an honest one, you know. You know there have been other examples with other senators mm. of this issue of double billing. Yeah, the, we have found none of that, zero, none. When you see your name associated with the other three senators <laughs> who are in situations yeah. uh, right now in, in terms of money, Duffy, Harb, mm -hmm. Brazo, do you see yourself as one of the four, or do you see yourself very separate from their situation? Well, the, it's a very different situation. Uh, theirs was uh, the three of those uh, gentlemen all had, you know, they, it was a very specific issue. It was about living in, you know, the nation's capital. It's these the residency, the issue. residency issue, the convoluted issues of 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 when you have a residence in the nation's capital and somewhere else. That wasn't my case. So uh, yes, our names are always in the headlines together, but they're very separate issues. Let me back it up a little bit mm -hmm. because I, as you well know, a lot of Canadians are, uh, they're not just puzzled by this, they're mad about it. Mm -hmm. So let, let's deal with a couple of, uh, of the issues on that front. Um, you've paid back tens of thousands of dollars. There may be more. Uh, you have resigned from the Conservative caucus, or at least stepped back from the Conservative caucus. You've uh, resigned your positions on a number of boards. Yes. But you haven't resigned from the Senate. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because I want to see these issues dealt with. Uh, I am doing my level best to sort out my particular case and make sure that there are no more issues and no more concerns. What about the Conservative caucus? Was that your decision or was it clear to you they wanted you out? It was clear to me that they wanted me out. 
uh, that was, you know, a, a phone call comes and you're given an hour to resign or you'll be fired, you know, for lack of a better word. Is that what happened? That's what happened. And, from whom? And, um, from the leadership in the Senate and, and uh, from the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff. So, you know, that's, I understand um, that... The, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff that day was uh, Nigel Wright. Well, not that day. It was it was the incoming uh, chief of staff that uh, that day because Nigel had uh, was I think you know uh, not. What did he say? Well, I think that was that they they just said this is you know their argument was that this was uh, um, you know a distraction and that I was not representative of. Uh, um, of the views that they wanted to have um, in public. Look, I mean, you know what, I, am I surprised by this? No. But it uh, sounds like a closed door. No matter what happens here, that, that relationship is done. Well, look, that's for them uh, to decide. I share a lot of the, uh, the views on uh, economic policy. My whole connection uh, with the Prime Minister, started with the, uh, his request for me to be on the Afghan panel. Well, let's uh, talk about the relationship with the Prime Minister, because in mid-February, mm -hmm. this had already started. It right. was already getting headlines. He stood up in right. the House of Commons and was extremely supportive of you. In terms of uh, Senator Wallen, uh, I've looked at the numbers. Her uh, travel costs are comparable to any parliamentarian traveling from that particular area of the country over that period of time? Yes, I thought so and I was appreciative. <laughs> well, things change. If she has in any way acted improperly, she will be subject to the appropriate authorities and the consequences for those So what happened? Did he let you down or did you let him uh, down? I don't know what happened. Uh, nothing, there was nothing different in, in my world. I mean, I'm going over these, uh, these papers, as, as I said, endlessly. Uh, and, and there was no new information as far as I was concerned. They may have other um, lines of communication with the auditors, I don't know, but nothing changed in terms of the facts of the case to my knowledge. Did he talk to you before no. the first statement? No. I didn't feel it was appropriate to have that conversation with the, uh, with the Prime Minister. I wanted to do my own homework and figure out where I actually sat before that conversation never occurred, so I didn't have this discussion with him. Did he talk to you at all after nope. that February statement? No. Nope. So you've never talked to the Prime Minister on this issue? No, I have not. How and about Nigel Wright? Yes, I talked to Nigel about it and I, I kept him in the loop as we were going. I assured him that we had uh, begun this process uh, in the office. We were working <laughs> literally night and day on this and I kept him abreast of those uh, developments just you know in the loop. And when you started making payments back did you tell him about that? I'd already done that I didn't have that conversation with him um, I mean I informed him of it after the fact. But he knew that you were paying back or that you had paid back? Yes, I bel I'm sure I told him that. I mean, I we. Well, you know what I'm getting at. Did he ever offer to no, help you pay? No, no, no. I would. I. It would have never been discussed. Uh, I don't. You know. I would have. That conversation would have come to an end. These are my mistakes, and I will pay my bills. I have worked every single day of my life, and I'm. I will continue to do that in one way or another. And I have always paid my own bills. Period. Full stop. He did not offer. I did not ask. It was not accepted. My money. When you found out that he helped Senator Duffy mm -hmm. deal with his expenses, what did you think of that? Well, look, that's. Uh, I don't know what went on <laughs> in that discussion. Um, you know, we know what the job of a principal secretary or chief of staff is. It's to. It, it's to try and protect. Uh, you know. The, the Prime Minister that he serves and works for. Never had that conversation. Protect him from what on that? Well, from just, you know, the, that's your job to solve problems, right? And, uh, and I, I don't know what was in either one of their heads. You know, Mike Duffy, I don't know. The, you know, that's, that's for them to discuss. I know my situation. I know how I feel about uh, my own responsibility for um, 
mistakes that uh, that I may have made that I'm responsible for. That's me. That's on me. We've known each other for a long time. Yeah. We were in journalism together right back to Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. We won't even say what year that election yeah. was. You, um, one of the ways you made your name mm -hmm. was in interviews, mm -hmm. tough questions. And nobody will forget the question you asked John Turner. Right. About whether or not he had a drinking problem. Mm -hmm. So here's the Pam Wallen question yeah. to Pam Wallen. Some have come to the conclusion that you have an entitlement problem. <laughs> that you just think things are owed you. I think that that is against every single thing that I stand for, that I believe in. It goes against the way I have um, conducted my professional life whether it was journalism or business or diplomacy or the Senate, uh, I do not have some sense of entitlement to um, in this. I want to do something that matters. So how hard has it been then to accept the fact that many people out there are watching tonight mm -hmm. feel that you and some of your colleagues have in fact been acting like you are entitled? Well, to take advantage of the system. I just don't see it and it's one of the reasons why I'm I'm trying to explain this that I think anybody understands that when you're dealing with mounds of paper you're going to make some mistakes. I am sorry for doing that. I wish I'd paid better attention. I really do. I didn't deliberately set out to abuse this system in any way. In fact I thought I was being pretty rigorous but I actually wasn't being rigorous enough and that's on me and I'm going to try and make that right if I can and I've done the best I can so far to try and do that and I am waiting for this uh, final report when and if it comes and uh, and then I'll try and make uh, you know I'll try and make that right too.